Austin Hill has met his match on track and now off a of track, apparently. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. Austin Hill was shaken after Saturday night's Xfinity race at Sonoma. Shane Van Gisbergen picked up his second career Xfinity win, second win in a row, and then he taunted Austin Hill on the cooldown lap by drifting behind him the entire time like this was a Formula D event. He was getting points for being as close as possible to the guy in front of him. I don't know if he meant to do it, but he definitely rattled Austin's cage a little bit because when Austin got out of the car, he spoke to Regan Smith and Fox Sports, and this is what he had to say. Uh, replay the best uh, it blacked out but uh you know i'm just gonna i'm gonna leave it to the keyboard keyboard warriors on this one i'll let them figure out what happened i'm sure no matter what comment i say it'll be wrong so um yeah once he finally got keyboard out of his mouth it felt like a personal attack i brought my keyboard over here today so i could do a little bit of keyboard worrying from my desk and honestly austin hill has done things like this in the past we have a long line of examples of what Austin Hill has done. So I went ahead and I was a keyboard warrior after that. And what Austin Hill has done over his career is exactly what SVG did to him. So on the final restart with 11 laps to go, Shane Van Gisbergen lines up on the outside for what essentially is turn one. And then the inside when you get to the top of the hill right there. And Austin Hill didn't really leave him a, leave him a lane. And Shane just said, okay, Kiwi man cometh, Kiwi man taketh. And that's exactly what he did. He came and he took that win away from Austin Hill and treated Austin Hill just like Austin Hill would have treated him in that exact same situation. They go into the corner. Austin doesn't give him a full lane. Shane says, okay, hip checks him out of the way. Doesn't spin him out, just moves him back in the pack some. And then SVG sails off to pick up his second x win in a row. And Austin's left relegated back in the pack. And then he gets out after the race and he said what you heard right there where he's like, oh, every time I have an opinion, the keyboard warriors come at me and I'm just gonna plead the fifth this time. Well, dude, I mean, every time you say your opinion, it's wrong because, well, obviously what you did on track was wrong. And you had this long rap sheet of instances where you've been driving like an idiot. And sure, Andy Petrie is going to come flying out of the trailer and defend Austin Hill like a mom at a, you know, youth soccer game. And they're just like, Austin just wanted to win. Why are the people letting Austin win? He just wants to win the race. Why are you touching Austin? Yeah, that's what happens. But instead, people are fed up with it. Shane Van Gisbergen is a 35-year-old guy. He's in his mid-30s. He does not care about Austin Hill and his intimidation factor at this point. And SVG just knows he's faster on road course, so he's like, eh, I'll clear him and drive away anyways. And he would have passed Austin if that caution hadn't come out, which was a weak caution for Jesse Love spinning out, headed down into the turn 11 hairpin. Um, local yells would have been great in that instance, but it allowed Shane to line up on the inside of him and then pass him. And that's just ultimately what was probably going to happen over those final you know, 12 or 13 laps of the race, whatever it was when that caution finally came out. So for Austin Hill, if he hadn't done, you know, all the things in his past, I'd be like, okay, like he has a legitimate gripe, right? Like he's just now been, you know, taken advantage of, except he's not been taken advantage of. I think the score is like a hundred in Austin Hill's favor and like three in everyone else's favor. And then he's got like 97 instances of people that probably need to pay him back at some point. And Shane talked about it in his post-race press conference and was asked about like the run-in that they had at Circuit of the Americas earlier this year, which again, Shane shot, probably should have won that race. Austin Hill takes him out of the lead and then he goes down and makes sure that Austin Hill's not gonna win the race and then Kyle Larson ends up winning the race. And then today, well, Saturday night at Sonoma, Shane was like, yeah, I think I, he took a win away from me. I took a win away from him now. I think we're even. And I think that's probably a fair way to look at it because at the end of the day, they pretty much are even in terms of taking wins away. But for Austin Hill, I mean, just think back, what, about a month and a half ago at Dover, he wrecked Justin Allgaier from the lead, he tried to wreck Carson Quapel from the lead, and Carson just stood his ground and wasn't going to be intimidated by Austin, Austin ends up spinning himself out. It's just always Austin Hill at the center of these controversies, and it's almost always Austin being the one at fault, even though he and his team over there at RCR don't want to admit it. There's a difference between driving hard and driving like a moron. And he's driving like a moron more often than not when he could probably be saving his race and not wrecking out. Yeah, he already has two wins. He's locked in the playoffs. Like, that's great for him. But when it comes to, like, running super well, he hasn't exactly been in contention for a lot of races since then. Yeah, you could argue Dover, like, was he was in contention there and he spun himself out trying to intimidate and door Carson Quapel, who wasn't going to give it to him. But he really probably desperately wants to get back to some drafting tracks at this point. So for Austin, 
yeah, he's going to say, oh, I plead the fifth now. And he's going to try to play victim in this, except he's not a victim at all. He's the August, like Augustine Canapino is trying to play victim in any car where he was like, oh, I'm the one that's being persecuted now. No, dude, you're the one that's caused all this problem. You're the center of this controversy right here. So Shane Van Gisbergen just didn't back down from him and he stood his ground. And I think that's exactly what you have to do to race Austin Hill. I mean, he's a 30 year old man, baby, as I had mentioned before in a previous video, and I don't think he's ever been told no enough in his life. And as SVG came over from New Zealand, and he's like, I'm here to tell you no now. You're going <laughs> to submit to me, essentially. And he did just that. He's now taken a second win in a row. And obviously, SVG, when we get back to the Ovals next week at Iowa, he's going to not be in this position of dominance that he's been in the last two weeks. So, that, so he'll go back to where he probably belongs at in the running order. And Austin Hill's not going to have to worry about him for a little bit. But he's continually gotten better on ovals as the seasons progress. So maybe eventually he'll have to worry about him. But I think SVG is moving up to cup next year. And I don't think Austin Hill is. So I don't think they'll have to race each other that much longer. Another half season, essentially. But for Austin Hill, yeah, I mean, you can yell about the keyboard warriors. You can yell about, you know having the wrong opinions and everything that goes along with that. But at the end of the day, you're kind of the one that's caused all of this, right? The multiple run-ins that you had with Sheldon Creed as a teammate last year, the multiple run-ins you had with everybody last year, when he got out of the car at Atlanta last year, and you were like, I just wanted to lead the race. Yeah, I feel like the 30, probably 38 or 37 other guys that were on track that day probably also wanted to lead the race as well and win. That's kind of what they're all there for. And then he has his multiple run-ins you know, already this year, the guy just has a reputation that follows him now. And now he's just been demoralized by SVG drifting behind him, taunting him on the entire cooldown lap, which again, laugh out loud funny as it happened. Because I was like, this just has to be so uncomfortable for Austin Hill. And you can see Austin Hill trying to like run away from him. At like the end of an iRacing race when you're just trying to, you know, get away from the rest of the pack so you can disconnect and hope nobody runs in the back of you. But one car keeps kind of trailing behind you right there. And you're like, please get away from me. I just want to get out of here right now. That's what Austin Hill looked like on Saturday. He just wanted to find a place to pull over, disconnect, and just get out of there because he did not want to be taunted by SVG. And Shane just didn't give a damn at all, which I think we're all absolutely here for at this point. Shane Van Gisbergen, like I said on TikTok earlier in the week, remains exactly what NASCAR needs right now. He absolutely gets it. He has a great celebration. He has a great burnout after the race, which is just drifting around the entire track. He kicks the rugby ball into the grandstand. He always, well, I shouldn't say always, not like he has a litany of wins, but he tries to incorporate the fans, give away the flag, stuff like that. He's super appreciative of his guys. He has great things to say in his interview. He doesn't look annoyed by having to give an interview. Everything about what he's doing right now is absolutely phenomenal. And hopefully everybody continues to support him and he doesn't change. But for Austin Hill, maybe it's a little bit of jealousy too, because everybody likes SVG. And I don't know of anybody outside of our friends over at Left Turn Cult that actually likes Austin Hill. And Andy Petrie. I forgot about Andy again. So let me know in the comments what you think about Austin Hill. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard. Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.